Jewelers had a rather tough quarter stateside. Bids.com sales dropped 7% to $20 million, and it doubled its loss to $1.5 million. The company warned of challenging times ahead for the rest of the year, given how U.S. consumers have decreased discretionary spending. Now, while internet darling Blue Nile did report stronger third quarter sales, Growth was observed mainly outside the U.S., which has been the case now for several quarters. Blue Nile sales rose 11% to $75 million, but expenses were up 14%, and its profit dropped 33% to just under $2 million. The company lowered guidance slightly for its fourth quarter, with sales projections now up 5% to 10%, but income that is only in line with last year. Separately, Blue Nile announced Diane Irvine stepped down as CEO and is leaving the company this week after 12 years. Blue Nile appointed an interim CEO and will launch a vigorous recruiting process for a new chief executive. Polished diamond prices eased in October as buyers pushed for deeper discounts, liquidity remains tight, and overall trading activity on the quiet side. The wrap net diamond index for one carats fell 3.5%. The 0.3 carat category declined by 6.7%, and index for half a carat dropped 6.6%. Wrapping for three carat fell 3.6%. You can read the entire research report at diamonds.net slash report. The DTC November site was estimated at $300 million. That was a good 40% drop from November site 2010. However, it has been a good year for the DTC as we estimate sales are up about 28% or approximately $5.9 billion. The final site of the year will be the week of December 5th. In the latest NFIB monthly research report measuring the health of independent small businesses and retail, wholesale and services found more owners reported sales declines in October than those with revenue gains. Overall, the net percent reporting higher nominal sales over the past three months fell to a net negative 12 percent. Inventory replenishment was flat and the outlook for inventory investment is weak heading into Christmas. The biggest problem, as most of you undoubtedly relate with, is that small businesses are being plagued by poor revenue growth. Furthermore, this is compounding a negative business owner outlook. The expectations for sales in November through January is negative, although slightly better than the lowest reading of the year taken in August. This current four-month negative turn is the worst showing since a 22-month stretch of negative growth in the Great Recession. The outlook six months out for overall general business conditions remains deeply negative, and again, a great deal of that pessimism comes from poor sales volume. Overall, the monthly index from NFIB remains below the benchmark 100 points with a value of 91. The good news is that only 9% of these companies reported credit needs were not being met, meaning 9 in 10 have satisfied their financial needs or simply don't require additional credit. The NFIB concluded that October survey was bad news for the nation's economy. They said consumer spending prospects for the future are dismal, uncertainty surrounding Washington's economic policies and their printing press solution, along with adding regulations and increased taxations, are weighing too heavily on the minds of small business owners and consumers alike to affect any immediate change. Time now to take a look at how precious metals prices are performing this past week. For all the latest industry news, be sure to check diamonds.net and follow Rappaport on Twitter and Facebook.